Hey, welcome back to Global Environment. We're still talking about fisheries. Uh, we talked a lot about the industrialization of fisheries, how we were using a lot of fossil fuels and we were pushing the resource too hard and that caused collapse. Now, I want to talk a little bit more about that and then go on to some other reasons why we're having trouble with our resource. Okay, um, you might have to look in the book um, at this slide, but what do we see here? We have, we have time on the x-axis and then we have a number of thing on, things on the y-axis and it shows what's going on with fisheries in the United States over time. So what you'll see here, here's the trend. The number of boats went down for a while until the 60s and then it started to increase. The number of people fishing went down for a while and then it increased. The number of vessels and vessel size increased for most of the 60s. But we know the resource and the amount of fish we were catching was actually going down at this time. Now what's, what's going on? What's wrong with this picture? This shows that we are pushing the resource. EROI is going way down and we talked about that in the last segment. We're using energy to push it. We're, we're, we're totally dependent on the fossil fuels that, is, that are backing up this process. So that's a big problem. ERI goes, goes down, it goes down, it goes down. Okay, and you can see this shows catch per unit effort. This is a, this is a way to describe EROI versus effort. You know, how hard are we trying? And you can see over time, the trend is decreasing. And we talked about these huge fishing boats. Now, you know, uh, you know, this is just a cartoon that shows you what's going on at, at the bottom of the ocean. The, some of these, these uh, fishing nets are so large that they, can, they could, could catch about five 747s that are side to side. So this is, this is major impact on the environment. And you can see that. I've got a few before and after pictures here. Now you have a very uh, slow growing, because it's deep ocean, uh, reef system or, or bottom system. And after one of these huge nets goes by, you get something like this. And, and we're talking about an area that is lost per year that is greater than what's lost in the rainforest. But it's, you know, it's one of those situations, you know, out of sight, out of mind. We don't see it occurring like we do in these pictures, so it looks like nothing's going on, but it is. I've got another one of these before and after shots, and you just see the, the extreme amount of damage going on here. And because these are deep water systems and they're far away from the sun, they recover very slowly. It's different than a, a rainforest might be. Okay, and, and we see a lot of papers being published talking about how fisheries are becoming depleted. Uh, it's a hot area of study. And, you know, we're, we're running into this. We've got the good, the bad, the ugly. Um, here's something we would like, but we're also getting invasives that are competing with the natural fish. And in the case of the lamprey, um, killing the native fish. So introduced species is another major problem when it comes to fisheries and not just ocean fisheries. Um, this will give you an idea of overfishing. If you can make out this slide, uh, this is kind of opening day for tuna. You know, hundreds of boats out here and helicopters to help uh, the guys in the boats. So um, you talk about over depleting a resource, this is the way to do it. And you can see here uh, tuna catches and this is, this is big money, this is big business. And to give you an idea, um, oftentimes there are Japanese businessmen waiting at the pier for these fish to come in and they pay cash, uh, thousands of dollars for these fish and then they immediately pack them in ice, dry ice usually, put them on a plane and fly back to Japan and they're used for sushi. Now, one of the um, predictions of neoclassical economics is you know, you don't have to worry so much about uh, over harvesting because if you do, the resource like the fish will become rare and the price will go up and people will slow down their purchasing of the resource because it's so expensive. But in this case, it's not happening and, and it's related to, you know, I like to call it Gucci fish. Um, the price goes up and then it becomes trendy and you, everyone wants to eat the fish 
and eat the sushi, so demand actually goes up. And you know, this is this is a big big problem if we're hoping that markets will solve this problem. Okay. Uh, another problem we have, uh, besides the economics we use, are the models that have often been used. We have been using a model called the Ricker curve, and the Ricker curve is kind of these, these dream models. It's the idea that you can have your cake and eat it too. We can harvest a resource and then it becomes more productive. You know, if we catch the fish, they'll reproduce more. Now, what's some logic behind that? Let's take a situation where there's a, an ecosystem with too many fish. They're competing with the, each other. Maybe they're not healthy. Maybe they're, they're destroying their own nesting. So if the population is too high, the productivity per year starts to go down. And the, and the Ricker curve kind of says, wait, we can help bring that population down and help increase the productivity of the resource. Um, but does that really happen? Let's, let's look at some of these slides here, some of these graphs that supposedly show the Ricker curve in action. And you, you, know, you might have to look at this in your book, but what you see is um, situations where there's a scatter plot. This shows the resource base and then the productivity here. And then Ricker curves are fit through this data. Now, do you see any problems here? Look at, look at this. It looks like it was a shotgun, but they, 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 have, um, they have put a Ricker curve. They, 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 they put it right through the scatter and said it's fitting the data. And it's not. And you can see in case and case, each case, the same thing's going on. It's not fitting the data. And just logically, if you were trying to come up with a series of factors that are important for the production of fish, yeah, sure, the population of fish is important, but there's various other things that are just as important, like climate and nutrients and predators and things like that. So trying to model and, and, and base our catch on a model that's so simplistic really doesn't work in the long run. There's, there's some cases where it works, but generally it doesn't. And because people are trying to use these models to regulate fishing, how much we should catch and how much we shouldn't catch, it's failing. Another thing is, how do you know the population of fish? It's under the water. That's hard to, to, to get a good handle on. And if you can see from these curves again, if you're a little wrong, you can have a disaster. Okay? So, poor models have hurt fisheries. Okay. So fisheries are collapsing. Uh, you know, fishing has become industrialized, very fossil fuel intensive. Uh, we're, we're using poor models like the Ricker curve. Uh, and our neoclassical economic models, when it comes to resource use, have really failed in this ca case. And also we have a hard time with commons when it comes to fisheries. Okay, so keep these factors in mind because it's, it's interesting um, when, when we relate it to fossil fuels, how similar some of these resource decline curves um, have been. And again, it shouldn't be this way. Fish are a renewable resource. We shouldn't be having a uh, Hubbard-type curve. We'll stop here, and I'll see you next time.